Believe it or not, it is possible to prevent heart attacks by following a surprising diet of eating certain kinds of food and taking supplements. We spoke with well-renowned author and cardiologist Dr. Stephen Gundry of Desert Regional Medical Center to learn what it takes to live heart happy. A, a person can absolutely prevent a heart attack, absolutely. And I wouldn't have believed that 13 years ago when I was a professor and chairman of heart surgery at Loma Linda University. But uh, having met a gentleman back then who uh, reversed most of the disease in his coronary arteries by a diet and taking supplements that he got at a health food store, and then doing that on tens of thousands of patients since that time, I'm convinced that uh, with proper selection of food, with proper supplements, that anybody, if they are so inclined, can prevent their imminent heart attack. Dr. Gundry talks about exercise. One of the really fun things that I have been able to do over the last few years is look at the correlation of exercise and what happens to people's heart muscles, what happens to the inside of their blood vessels. And I have a, a number of really rather vigorous exercisers who are running five and six miles a day or doing half marathons on the weekend. And when we do their blood work, uh, we realize that they're actually killing heart cells. And this has actually been established over the last 10 years that uh, running a marathon is, will kill so many heart cells you can't believe it. And a, a number of my patients have extensive coronary artery disease and they exercise like maniacs. And when we back off on their exercise program, their, the damage to the heart begins to go away. Back in the 1950s, very few people had heart disease, despite the fact that 80% of men smoked and about 70% of women smoke. And if you look at any movie from the 1950s, you'll notice that everybody is profoundly thin. They would be, you know, they all look like sticks. None of these people were doing marathons. Nobody was going to the gym. They weren't jazzercising. There wasn't PX90. There wasn't Zumba. And yet all these people were stick thin and they didn't have heart disease. And now we're all going to the gym and we're doing all this crazy stuff and everybody's dying like flies from heart disease and nobody's smoking. So you all have to ask yourself, what happened? What happened is we changed our food. Dr. Gundry discusses how foods have changed. We have totally changed how we feed animals. When you were growing up in the 1950s, cows were raised on grass. They went to a stockyard for couple weeks to fatten up on corn uh, that hadn't been genetically modified. And uh, chickens were out in the back eating bugs and grass. And believe it or not, not too many people ate chicken except when the old hen was a stewing hen because uh, she couldn't lay eggs anymore. I grew up on a lot of stewed chicken, but fried chicken was a little unusual. And not too many people were eating a whole lot of pizzas back then. Um, there's been some very interesting studies by uh, PhD candidates looking at the changes that correlate to obesity in the United States from 1900 to the year 2000. And what they found, which is shocking, it's not what you think. It's not our sugar consumption. It's not our soft drink consumption. It's not high fructose corn syrup. It correlates to two things and two things only. The increase in chicken consumption and the increase in pizza consumption. Those two things track obesity exactly. Nothing else does. With the sophisticated blood tests that actually insurance and even Medicare covers these days, you can actually, what I, what I call, you can see a great white shark that is inside of you while you're sitting on a boogie board uh, thinking it's a beautiful day off the coast of Southern California unbeknownst to the fact that there's an 18-foot great white shark that thinks you look a lot like a seal. And we can actually now see these great white sharks on people's blood work. And it's not the routine test that your doctor runs every three months, but they're available. My best advice is stay away from whole grains. They're poisonous. 
Believe it or not, the less fruit you eat, the healthier you will be. The more fat in the form of olive oil and coconut oil and macadamia nut oil you eat, the healthier you will be. Years ago, I learned from the Italians that the only purpose of food is to bring olive oil into your mouth. And I eat about an 80% fat diet. And the more you skip meals, the healthier you will be. And the best meal to skip is breakfast. 